All right, guys, so I have some form and setup tips here for you for a banded high row. Um, so again, first, before we even get into the form, the execution, the setup, talking about the purpose of a high row. Um, and again, there's not really like this definitive thing that it's better for as opposed to basically a pull down or a row. It's essentially somewhere in between. And that's the benefit of it. Again, when you have things that go through your shoulder joint, especially when you're training large muscle groups or uh, muscle groups with broad origin, and, or excuse me, yeah, broad origin, um, then it can have a benefit of obviously that's the reason we don't just do pull downs for lats or just rows. There's benefit to doing both. So the benefit of a high row is again, it's probably a little bit more lat bias than most horizontal rows. And again, if anything else, it can help take some of the upper back out of the equation. So when you're doing a pure horizontal row, you know, there can obviously be a lot of mid lower traps involved, even upper traps, which isn't bad. And this variation certainly doesn't take all of the traps out of it. But again, as soon as the line of pull is a little bit more upward, it at least helps keep upper traps out of it, less mid traps, and then still some lower traps involved. So again, if you see it in your programming, that's really the goal, not really isolating anything drastically different. It's basically going to be just a little bit more lat bias of a row. As far as setup, again, this is the stuff I think that's advantageous for a home gym. One, I recommend getting a grip that's a little bit wider. If you can find one even a little bit wider than that's probably great. I actually have this for my wife and this is pretty darn good for her. It's a teeny bit narrow for me, uh, but in reality, it's not horrible for the range of motion I'm using. But at the same thing, almost every roll, row or pull down, just put your arms at your side, bend your elbow, and that's the grip that's gonna be perfect. So if you see for me, you know, I'm basically just outside of that. If I had another, you know, three or four inches of width, it would be great. But again, it's one of those things where the degree makes a difference. If it was really, really narrow, you know, I might have issues sooner, the wider it gets, the better it fits. Then from there, as far as the height goes, I'm going to be on the ground. I'm going to be using something for bracing the same as you would basically at a gym, uh, because that's a big thing that's different from home gyms to normal. So normally if you're doing a row, like a cable row or a cable high row, or even a machine row, you have something to push into. So if it's like a hammer strength high row, you have a chest pad to push into. If it's a cable row at a, um, a gym, you know, you have something to push your feet into. They have the thing for your feet. So that can often be something at home that's a limiting factor. So I'm gonna show you a little hack for that. The advantage here is that you can move these up and down. So you can change your height. Again, some cables have that option at some gyms, but some are just a fixed position for rows. So you can adjust the height. If you're looking for a good height, again, I'm going to be seated on, seated on the ground, then basically something right mid torso. So kind of right at the bottom of your rib is a little above your belly button. That seems to be a pretty good spot to accomplish the goal that we're looking to do here. The only big downside here is the profile is not great. Um, but again, within the context of the workout, this is normally something where we're just trying to get some good contractions in somewhere, not necessarily a big meat and potatoes movement. So yes, ideally, I would want an exercise that gets lighter as I pull into finish, or at least stays the same. This actually gets heavier. So again, that part's not ideal, but again, within the context of the workout, normally not a big deal. So your options for load, again, as always, are how far back you pull, will obviously make any given band heavier. Or your option here too is use heavier bands or use more bands. So that's what I'm gonna show. I've demoed this with an orange band, moderately heavy, but to show you something maybe more close to what I would use, you can combine bands, the so orange band and a red band, or obviously two orange bands or whatever it is. And the advantage here, the most easy option for people to give some bracing is to put a bench right against the rack because you wanna have something to put your feet into. So again, especially as you get heavier, really just take it right through the bands. So again, they're looped around there. Once they're on there, it's not gonna slide up and down, especially once they're tight put it through the center of the handle. It's obviously not gonna go anywhere unless you let it go. And then from there, you're stepping back and using the bench the same that you would, basically the feet uh, rest of the foot platforms of like a cable row at the gym. So hopefully this is pretty clear. I'm almost in the exact same position as a cable row. The nice part is this is a little bit higher, so I've made a little bit of a high row. And lots of times you'll see, I'll change the bias on this. So if I want a little bit more lats, I'll recommend leaning forward a little bit as well too. And obviously you see all that really changes as far as my torso relative to the band makes it a little bit higher or makes it almost closer to a pull down. So again, just going from here to here changes that line of force relative to my body. And again, will help me recruit some stuff that's a little bit lower as opposed to basically mid and upper traps. Then from there, the biggest cue that I'll give, and I'll show without the band in a minute, but is driving my upper arms down. So again, as opposed to just pulling it right towards me, which can really, you know, a lot of people get their biceps involved, you know, and can get that upper back involved. I focus on pulling the handles down to start. That helps you really keep it from the lats and continue to pull it down just until that upper arm's at your side. So again, I'm not trying to pull it back really far here, just getting a nice stretch up and forward. Pull that upper arm down from the lat first, tuck it right in at the side. And again, the goal here most of the time in your program is just to get whatever left you've got in your lats. So 
that's with the band. And then what I was going to show as well too is, so again, if your thought process is, again, this is your lat right here, basically the insertion here, all the origin stuff down here. So again, just visualize your lat is a rope. Somebody pulled on a rope here, what would it do? It would pull this first. So again, it will pull your humerus down, which in turn will pull your scapula down as well too. So if you initiate the motion thinking of your upper arm driving to the floor, driving towards your lap, driving towards your hips, whatever, just landmark just to help give you some cues. That's a great way to make sure that your lats are starting and one, definitely not your biceps, but also not upper back stuff as well too. So focus on driving that upper arm down, squeezing the lat, and then just continue to squeeze till that upper arm is right in at your side. So again, just to reiterate, as far as setup goes, that's just a decent place to start. Absolutely mess around with personal preference. You could obviously do a normal row all the way down towards the bottom, more of a high row from the top. Again, mess around with your bench a little bit depending on where you're at, but find some place to put your feet. The whole goal of that is to keep you from sliding forward. Um, and again, especially depending on the surface you're on, especially depending on how heavy you go. And then again, the only other thing to really mess around with there is the handles. So again, ideally, this is gonna be wherever your arms move at your side is gonna be ideal. And just try and avoid something super narrow.